title of the sermon this evening is Gossiping According to the Bible. Gossiping According to the Bible. Now here in 2 Corinthians chapter number 12, verse number 20 is what I want to focus on. Again, that 2 Corinthians chapter number 12, verse number 20. Now in this verse what we have is Paul writing unto the church of Corinth. Now the church of, of Corinth is a church that had a history of a lot of problems. Really what the, the epistle of 2 Corinthians is about, it's about, it's about a follow-up of all of their issues. And here in 2 Corinthians chapter number 12, verse number 20, he basically paints a hypothetical picture of what would be the dysfunctional church, of what a dysfunctional church would look like. And he gives you all of the attributes, all the things that he doesn't want to come and find when he gets there because he's going to be visiting them. So I want you to look at verse number 20. It says this, For I fear, lest when I come, <coughs> I shall not find you such as I would, and that I shall be found unto you, <coughs> excuse me, Michaela, give me a water, please, unto you as ye would not, saying you wouldn't want me to find you this way, and I don't want to find you this way. Now he's going to explain, like I said, the attributes of a dysfunctional church. It says this, Lest there be debates. It's arguing back and forth, of course. Envyings, one person, you know, wanting to be or better than another person. It says wrath, says angry, strifes. Again, that's arguing about something, like debating. Then it says this, backbitings, whisperings, swellings, tumults. Now, <clears throat> if you were to speak to anyone that, has, that knows anything about churches splitting, about churches breaking up, about churches having problems... There are always three elements to it, every single time. I know of at least, at least two, maybe three churches that actually end up splitting or breaking up, and there are three elements every time. Number one, there is a transgressor and someone that has been transgressed against, right? So there would be a, a transgression against a person. There's one person that has transgressed against someone else. They have, there's not only sinning against God in the Bible. The Bible talks about sinning against your brethren. So there's one person that has sinned against their brethren, right? That is one thing that would be found. Number two would be that there is no forgiveness. Also, there is no forgiveness in this particular state, in this particular situation. And number three is this, gossip. Every single time, every time. When there's a problem, the reason why the entirety of the church is split is because why? The whole church knows about what's going on. A problem that probably, or I'm sure, everyone should not be known about. No, or everyone should not know about. And we're going to get into this unless they're involved in whatever took place, whatever it may be. You know, there are different issues that are brought up in different churches all the time. But they always have those three elements. Someone sinned against another person. Normally, there's someone that will not forgive another person as well. And then lastly, there is the situation with people gossiping. All of these three things always exist. And I'll, I'm going to show you throughout the Bible that gossip is the number one danger of a church splitting. Gossip and the power that the tongue has is extremely, extremely dangerous. And, it's, and it's, we are warned about it all throughout the Bible. Now, what I'm going to do for you first here is I'm going to give you the de definition of gossip according to Wikipedia right now, a modern dictionary. But then, the word gossip is not used in the Bible. There are three words that are used in the Bible. The Bible's perfect, and I'm going to show you how perfectly this works out. There are three words that are used in place in the Bible instead of the word gossip. And these three words all mean gossip. They all mean gossip. They all explain gossip, the, the idea or the concept of gossip. But they go, and there's actually four words. I'm sorry. Sorry, let me back that up. There's four words that are used. Four words. One that's not used very often. That's why I forgot about the one. But there are four words that are used in the Bible for gossip. They are all, in a, in a, in a large way, interchangeable. They are synonymous. They all mean gossip. But they all have a slightly different slant. And you can learn something differently from each of these words about the dangers of gossip. And not only that, and this is what I want to do for you tonight. This is one of the major things that I want to do for you tonight. I want to define for you when you are gossiping so that you can stay away from gossip. So that you know, hey, I've gossiped. I'm gossiping right now. I need to stop doing this. This is something that is socially accepted today that is very wrong and very evil. It's almost like covetousness in our society. I'm sure everyone knows what I'm saying, but no one, half the people that you speak to that are non-to-non-Christians especially, they don't have a clue that
that when they look at something and desire it and it's not theirs, that they're sinning. They think that you're crazy when you tell them that. Why? Because it's so socially acceptable today. There are Christians going around gossiping all the time and they have no idea that they're doing it. Just like the, the sin of covetousness, they have no idea that they're doing it. I'm going to define for you according to the Bible when you are gossiping and so that you can know going forward to, when to eliminate these, these you know, uh, conversations in your life personally. You know why? So that we don't end up having a church split. We're not having issues or anything like that. That's not what I'm saying, but... Here's the thing. When you look at other examples of other churches that have had major problems, we need to learn from their mistakes. We need to learn from the problems and the issues that they've had. You know what you need to do? I don't want to stand up here and preach a sermon after gossiping has split the church with the ten people that we have left. I want to stand up here and preach a sermon preemptively before we have a church split. God willing, we never will. Before we have any problems, any issues, I want to stand up here and preach a sermon so that everyone can right now better themselves and then ultimately be better for the church and better their brethren as well. Amen. I want you to go to in your Bibles. I, well, here, here, let's do this first. While we're here, 2 Corinthians chapter number 12, verse number 20, we find two words. Two of the four words are actually found here of, the word, of what we, we say today, gossip. Number one is whisperings. Number one is whisperings. What does it mean to be a whisperer? It means you are talking about someone behind their back. You are talking about someone behind their back. Why is it saying that they are whispering? Because there, there is a certain person that they don't want to hear what they are saying. That's what it's talking about. You are whispering. You are going behind someone's back and talking behind their back. That is a whisper. Number two is found right before that, a backbiter. A backbiter is not someone that is coming behind you and backstabbing you or biting you in the back. As People actually, Brother Josh kind of smirk, but people think that. I've heard people interpret backbiting as backstabbing. That's not what it means. Backbiting is someone biting you behind your back to someone else. You know, it's someone that's going behind your back and talking to another person when you don't know about it, just like whispering. They're going somewhere and they're talking about you personally about private information usually, and they're biting you to another person. They're talking bad about you to another person. These are the first two words that, de that describe the concept of what we call today gossiping. Number one, whispering. What do we learn from that? Number one, if whispering. If you are talking about someone behind their back or they're not there, they're not present, and you have to whisper, it's not something that you would say to them. That, you shouldn't be talking about it, obviously. If you are, you know, having to, to speak about a particular subject when someone is not around, that's a big sign that you, those words should not be coming out of your mouth in the first place. There should be no reason why you couldn't say that to them then. So that's the first thing. It's a whisper, a person that's talking behind another person's back because they are afraid to say that which they are talking about in front of that person. The second thing is a backbiter. Notice that it involves pain. It involves hurt. If you are talking about something that could possibly hurt this person that is not present, then that is gossiping. These are the two characteristics of gossiping. If you cannot speak about this subject or these words in front of this person, they shouldn't be coming out of your mouth in the first place. Number one. Number two, if it is something that is hurtful to another person, you shouldn't be saying it. Period. Okay, let's look at the next one. Go to 1 Peter chapter number 4, verse number 15. 1 Peter chapter number 4, verse number 15. 1 Peter, <coughs> excuse me, chapter number 4, verse number 14. <coughs> 1 Peter chapter number 4, verse number 15, the Bible says this. <coughs> But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Now we're going to look at busybody further, but this is the third word. We're going to get another part of this definition. But a busybody is another word. It is the third of the four words that are used in the Bible to describe what we call today as gossiping. We have whispers, we have backbiters, and we have busybodies. So right here... <laughs> It defines this for you as well. It says, as a busybody, and then look what it says next. In other men's matters. In other men's matters. There are things in our lives, in our families, in you know, our personal lives, even <coughs> individuals, 
that are private and that are our matters. Everyone would agree with that. I'm sure everyone, which this would you know, defy the purpose of it, but I'm sure everyone could write down a list right now of things that you don't want other people talking about, that you don't want other people to know, that you wouldn't want other people to know about you, and especially not just know about you, not just you know, talk about you, but especially talk about you behind your back. That is the third definition is a busybody. Now, notice that it says that they <coughs> are a busybody. This is going to tie in with the next definition. A busybody is someone that is not staying still. Their body is busy. Why? Because they're not talking to you about this. What are they doing? They're walking around and talking to other people about this. The whole purpose that they want to do this is because they get enjoyment. And we're going to get into this in a minute. They get enjoyment about, they get enjoyment from talking about other people's matters. Now, uh, go ahead and turn to 1 Timothy chapter number 5. I'll get into my next point there. 1 Timothy chapter number 5. <coughs> so the third one is a busybody. What is, the, what is the definition there that we find of a busybody? It is someone that is in other men's matters. Notice other men's, not yours. Other men's matters. It's someone else's matter. The implication is clear that this is not your business. This is not something that you need to be talking about. Why? Because it has nothing to do with you. It's other men's matters. It's not your business. Go to, I want you to go, as I said, 1 Timothy chapter number 5. 1 Timothy chapter number 5. Let me give you there, there myself. 1 Timothy chapter number 5. <coughs> Excuse me. 1 Timothy chapter number 5. It says in 1 Timothy chapter number 5, look at verse number 11. But the younger widows refuse, for when they have begun to wax wanton against Christ, they will marry, having damnation, <clears throat> having damnation because they have cast off their first faith. And withal, they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but tattlers also, and busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. Now, something first I want to point out to you. <coughs> that's not exactly related, is look at the word idle there. Is this person sitting still? Are they? It, you know, that's how we use the word today. But this person's not sitting still. It says, look one more time. It says that they become idle, and with all they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house. Do you know why the Bible says they're idle? Because they're not being productive. They're not getting their job done of what they should be doing. God looks down, and you may do it, be doing a lot of work, but if it's not the work that you should be doing, and even further, it's counterproductive, it's hurting someone else, God says you're being idle. You've got nothing done. You're getting nothing done. You're just basically sitting around when he looks at you. He says, and with all, they learn to be idle, <coughs> wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but tattlers also, and busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. We see busybodies being brought up again, and we know what that means. That means that this person is in other people's matters. What are they doing? Why are they wandering about from house to house? Because they're spreading other people, other men's matters, other people's matters. Whether, you know, men in the Bible, it's just mankind there. Just other people's business. They're going around from house to house with the intent of sharing private information. Men's matters there, like I said once already, the implication is that this is not your business. The implication is that this is their business and no one else's. This is private information. And what is this person doing? They're taking that private information. They're not doing their job of what they should be doing. And then they're going from house to house and they're spreading this private information. This information that other people should not know. So there's busybodies again. Now... <coughs> I, I want to point this out while we're here in 1 Timothy 5 before we move on to another verse. And I also have one other thing, too, I want, to, I want to get to. But notice who specifically is mentioned here. It was generalized before, and it's brought up and generalized many times. But men are never specified as being busybodies. Men are never specified as being tattlers. Men are never specified as being whisperers or backbiters ever in the Bible. It's generalized, and then women are specified. Now... All of us, men and women, male and female, we all have our own, you know, we all have a sin nature. Let me say that first. We all are sinful. But men will have more of <coughs> a propensity for certain sins. And women will have more of a propensity, different sins, 
than, than uh, men would. Women would have different propensities for this sin. and you know They have struggles with different sins. We all have a sin nature. But there, and we all do all of these sins. Men gossip too. But men fall more deeply into specific sins. Specific sins. And women, they have their own, which are different than men, specific sins that they struggle with. We're different. We live in a world today that tries to act like we're not. It's foolishness. Men and women are different. Men struggle with specific sins. Women struggle with different specific sins. Right. And here's the truth. One of those sins that women struggle with much more than men is being a busybody. Is being, like the Bible says here, we're going to get to this, the fourth definition, a tattler. Being a whisperer, being a backbiter, talking about other men's matters, talking about and whispering be behind someone's back. And not only that, backbiting, talking bad about other people when they are not around, hurtful things that they are saying about another person. And we're going to get to, you may not even intend on doing that, but that's what you're doing when you're talking about other men's matters behind their back. Now, the other one is a tattler here. Now, I also want to define this for you deeply to deeper because it's not used exactly like we use the word today, but there's a major overlap. Now, when we say tattler, it is exclusive to what today? Who, do we, who are we talking about? Children. Children. Always. It's exclusive. I, can't I, I thought trying to think earlier, I can't think of another time where you would say, hey, you're a tattler. Like, you wouldn't call an adult that. It's ridiculous, right? It's exclusive to children, isn't it? Right? Well, here we see it being spoken of as an adult. But I'll tell you the, the, the overlap is this. When someone is tattling on someone, a child today is tattling on someone, what are they normally doing? Is the child normally guilty or innocent? They're guilty, aren't they? Right? The child that, that is, is being tattled on is guilty. That's what they're doing. Don't tattle. They're telling something bad that the other child has done. Right? That's what it means to be a tattler. Right? Uh, you know, obviously when we say, hey, don't tattle... You know, it's things that are small and quit just coming to me with every transgression that that child does, right? That's what we're saying, right? But there's the same, the same concept is being held here. A tattler is someone that is going around and they're not telling people just any, any business. Do you know what they're telling on this person for? Things that they have done wrong. Think about that. That is the overlap with our word today. They're tattling on people because they are going around and they're telling sins that another person has committed. We're going to get into this in just a minute. They're going around and they're telling on that person for transgressions that they have committed in the past. Things maybe that they've done now. Even maybe a, a recent sin that they have committed. And what are they doing? They're going around and they're spreading this from house to house, door to door. Now, here's the thing. When we look at gossip... You say, well, that doesn't make sense to me. Well, I'm going to prove it to you in a minute that every time someone's gossiping in the Bible, they're always telling about when it's mentioned, they're always talking about problems that someone has, number one. But number two, you just tell me in general, what's the most, you know, uh, uh, what's the, the juiciest thing that people like to talk about when they're gossiping? Bad things that people have done, isn't it? Do they go around and they talk about, hey, behind their back, would you consider this gossiping? If you went back and you started talking about how great somebody did at their job, that's foolishness. That's silly. Gossip is talking about bad things that someone has done. Tattlers and busybodies are used together there. So it makes perfect sense when we look at what's a toddler today. right? We can see how the word, as far as etymology, changed slightly. They were taking something bad right? that, that someone had done, and they were going around and they were spreading what this, this bad thing that they had done to everyone, aren't they? They're going around and they're just talking about this to everybody. Now, now, before we get into this, I'm sure no one in here thinks that that's right. I'm sure everybody knows and understands that's wrong, to go around and spread someone's business. And you know why you know that? Because you know that if you did something wrong, you don't want everybody to know about it. Right. I'm sure nobody would say, yeah, you know, all of my sins in my past, every transgression, let's just print it in the newspaper. Let's just get it out on TV. Nobody wants to know the things of their past. And you know why gossiping is so dangerous? You know why it's so bad? Because the sins and the transgressions that you've committed are the things that you are the most ashamed of in your life. And it's the last thing that you want everyone knowing about, isn't it? Right. That's why it's so hurtful. That's why it's, you know, it's considered backbiting, hurting someone's feelings behind their back. It is the, and that's why when you look around at churches, that's why gossip 
is three quarters of the ingredient that splits a church and hurts people. Because you know what's the most hurtful thing? No, here's the thing. We should forgive other people. But do you know what? The worse the transgression that the person has committed against you, just by human nature, it makes it that much harder to forgive them. So when they sin greatly against you, and then they, or someone else, tells the entire congregation, it makes it that much harder or that much more difficult to, get, to forgive that person, doesn't it? I'm not saying that you shouldn't. I'm just saying, as in human nature, it makes it that much harder. Gossip is a very hurtful thing. Because gossip is always spreading bad news. It's always spreading failures. It's always spreading sins. It's being a tattler according to the Bible. I want you to go to Leviticus chapter number 19, verse number 16. Number nine, uh, chapter number 19 is Leviticus. <coughs> chapter number 19, verse number 16. I was wrong, actually, once again, because there's another word that we haven't used yet. But there's four words that I was focusing on that, I, that we get from this. And I'll show you here in just a moment. That we, we get, we, uh, what I'm going to focus on here in just a minute, the four words uh, where we learn from different angles about gossiping. Look at Leviticus chapter number 19, verse number 16. Leviticus chapter number 19, verse number 16. Here we find another word, <clears throat> a talebearer. Look at verse number 16. This is the Old Testament word says this, Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people. Does that sound familiar? It's exactly what was described in 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. It almost seems like the same person, singular, author, you know, the Old Testament and the New Testament. The exact same concept is explained. It talks about them being you know, idle. It talks about them wandering about from house to house. And not only idle, but tattlers also and busybodies. What are they doing? They're going from house to house, and they're tattling. They're going from house to house, and they're busybody. They're being a busybody. What is this person doing? They're going up and down. What's that mean? House to house. They're idle. They're not getting anything done, but they are a tail bearer. Now, again, a tail means story. A bearer means you're carrying this. It's like a person carrying a message, and they're just going from house to house. They're going up and down. Do you think that they're bringing good tidings? Is that why you think they're spread? Do you think they're going around just to spread all of your accomplishments? No. They're being a talebearer about bad news. They're being a talebearer and they're tattling on you. They're telling personal information, sins that you might have committed, failures in your life, problems that you have. They're going from house to house and they're bearing tales or stories about you personally that are hurtful unto you. So notice what it says. It says this Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer. <coughs> Among thy people, neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. So this is a commandment. Thou shalt not, just as much as it's a commandment, to not make a graven image, not to bow down to it, not to lie to your neighbor. All of those things. The Ten Commandments, the Bible says in Leviticus 19, 16, Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer. That is a commandment. The Lord says not to be a gossiper. It is a sin to be a gossiper just as much. You're transgressing God's law in the same way as if you broke one of his Ten Commandments. It's just, you know, it's just, and it's more dangerous. It can be more dangerous. Again, like I said, we're going to get into that. I want you to turn to another passage here. I want you to go to the New Testament now. I want to look at something. Change gears just slightly for a moment. I want to look at the danger that the tongue just has in general. James chapter number three. James chapter number three. James chapter number 3. <coughs> These are people that are tailbearing. They are in other men's matters. They're not going about and telling about things that accomplishments that they have themselves either. And it's not good news. It's about other people and it's bad news. They're going around and they're tattling on people. They're telling other people's bad news is what they are doing. And here's the thing, you know, because it's so just, just accepted in our society today, people don't even, like I said, people don't even realize when they are gossiping. And the one thing I really want to home in on in your mind, and we're going to look at it one more time, is the idea of being in someone else's 
matters. The idea of being in another person's you know, uh, private affairs, if you will. If someone is not willing to share this information with you themselves, and especially if this is a wrongdoing that someone has committed themselves, or a failure in their life, or something to do along the lines of their family, and they aren't willing to share this information with you, and there's no need or it's not necessary for you to be involved, you know, as far as being a witness or anything like that, then you are gossiping if you talk about that to anyone else. Think about what I just said. And I am sure that the majority of people in here, and like I said, the majority of women specifically, are guilty of this constantly. Listen to, listen to what I just said. If you are talking about someone else's private information, someone else's sins, someone else's problems that they have in their life, and you know that, and number one, they haven't told you about it, they haven't come to you and you're not discussing this to them, and you're talking to someone else about it, you're gossiping. Right. It's that simple. If you're not involved, and you have no need to be involved, and you are talking about someone else's information, you're gossiping, period. Gossip is always bad news. What, what purpose do you have to talk about other people's sins? Explain that to me. Answer this question. Do you think you're talking about it to better that person? Do you think you're talking about it because you care about their life, because you care about the problems that they have? No, that's not what it is. For whatever reason, this is in, you know, this sin is in mankind of just talking about other people's downfalls, of talking about other people's sins. That's a fact. People just enjoy to talk about when other people screw up. That is a fact. And they like to do it behind their back. That is a fact. And women are even more guilty of it than men. So you know what that means? You need to be more careful about that particular sin, ladies. All the women need to be more careful about that. They need to be watching their lives. They need to be looking at the things that they're saying and analyzing the words that come out of their mouth. Now I'm going to show you why that matters so much right now. James chapter number 3. We're going to see what the, how the Bible describes the danger of the tongue and how dangerous the tongue can be. Look at James 3. Verse 1, my brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. <clears throat> For in many things we offend all. <laughs> if any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. So what he's ex explaining right there is very important. Let me stop real quick and then the rest of it we're going to kind of read through. So you need to pay attention to it while reading it. He's saying if you're able to not offend by your mouth, by your word, then you're a perfect man. And you're able also to bridle the whole body. Saying the very last thing that man is able to control is his tongue. The thing that is, that is out of control for the majority of people. And the hardest thing to tame, he goes on to explain, is the tongue. If someone is able to control the things that come out of their mouth, then that would be a perfect man. Because that's the last thing that mankind is able to control. That should make you even more diligent about watching the things that you say. Because, as we're going to read, it gets out of control so easily. Look at the very next verse. Verse 3. Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths. They are, I'm sorry, that they may obey us. And we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listed. Verse 5. Pay attention. Even so, the tongue is a little member... And boasteth great thanks. <coughs> Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. So notice what he says. How great a matter just a little fire kindleth. Just the little bit of damage that your tongue can do. The little member, you know, or the, I'm sorry, the little member in your mouth is able to do great damage. Is able to do great damage to others. Look at the next verse. Verse number six. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. Notice that. That is strong language. The tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body. And watch this. And setteth on fire the course of nature and is set on fire of hell. Do you read that? That, that right there, those words right there, I mean, those are strong words. When you read it, you know what it should make you do? I need to be that much more careful about the things that come out of my mouth. No other body part, no other attribute of mankind 
is talked about in that way ever. The most hurtful thing that you can do to another person comes from your mouth. Not from your fierce, your, your force, or how strong that you are, or maybe what you can do to another person. That's not the most hurtful thing that you can do to someone else. The most pain that you can cause to another person comes from your tongue. The most member, the most powerful member, most dangerous member that you have on your body is your tongue. The words that you speak. So it says this, verse 7, For every kind of beasts and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed, and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil. Look at this. Full of deadly poison. You say, oh, my tongue's not like that. Your tongue is exactly like that. Exactly like that. Your tongue is filled and full of deadly poison. De Listen to the words. It's, it's set on, your tongue is set on fire of hell. I mean, that is, that is strong language. Nothing else is spoken of about mankind and, and anything that causes man to sin or, or, or mankind's sin, excuse me, sinful nature is never spoken of like that. Ever. Only the tongue. You need to be careful by the things that come out of your mouth. You need to try your best to tame your tongue. Of all the things in your life, you need to worry about what comes out of your mouth the most. Don't neglect other things, but you need to be careful about the things that you speak and the things that you say and the things that you know, flutter off of your tongue. They matter more than anything that you do in this life. Look at what it says next. next. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Doth the fountain send forth at the same place, place sweet water and bitter? Go to uh, Proverbs chapter number 18, verse number 21. We're going to read through quite a few Proverbs here quickly. Proverbs chapter number 18, verse number 21. <clears throat> Proverbs, again, it's Proverbs chapter number 18, verse number 21. We're looking at the danger of the tongue. And I'm, gonna, I'm going to show you a cross-reference repeatedly into the book of Proverbs about the tongue, you know, being set on fire of hell and about the tongue kindling fires. And I'm going to show you that what James 3 is talking about is gossip. I'm going to cross-reference, as I said, James 3, and show you that that same attribute about the tongue catching things on fire is actually talking about a tailbearer catching things on fire and then sending that forth. It moving from place to place. What happens when you set something on fire? What does it do? It spreads and it travels. What happens when someone's being a tailbearer and they go from house to house? One tailbearer goes and tells another tailbearer, and what happens? And then that other tail bear goes and tells another tail bear. And what does it do? It just spreads. You know, what, you know what's like that in this world today? Fire. And that's exactly what the Bible likens, God likens your tongue unto. Look at Proverbs chapter number 18, verse number 21. Proverbs chapter number 18, verse number 21 says this. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Do you notice that? It says death and life are in the power of the tongue. Think about how powerful your words are. Let these verses sink down in your mind. Go to uh, the next passage here. Proverbs chapter number 10. Back up, please. Proverbs chapter number 10, verse 18. Proverbs chapter number 10, verse number 18. <coughs> he that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. Slander is a really another form, if you will, of you know, uh, backbiting. In a sense, slander more or less refers to a lie normally. When people are slandering you, they're not usually lying. Look at verse 19. In the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. Now, this is a misunderstood by verse by a lot of people. When it says wanteth, it means <coughs> that they don't lack. The Bible, when it says want, it means lack. It's saying when there's a lot of words, there's, their sin's not going to lack. It's saying there will be sin present. If you're going to just be speaking all the time, not taming your tongue, sin's going to come out of your mouth. Why? Because the tongue is dangerous. Because the tongue needs to be tamed. Look at the very next verse. There's a little nugget here. It's pretty interesting. It says this, The tongue of the just is as choice silver. And then it says this, The heart of the wicked is little worth. So it, it cross-references what two things, or it uh, uses interchangeable there, what two things. Heart, if you look at that again, heart, and then it says the uh, tongue. Saying the things that you speak, and then the things that come out of your heart. Why? What does the Bible teach? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So that's another uh, uh, cross-reference to that verse specifically. Because he's saying, he cross-references two things. That's what the, the book of Proverbs 
It's basically a, a, a proverb is just a single saying that's, that has wisdom in it. And what it does all throughout the book of Proverbs is he contrasts two things so that you can learn from the two things. All right, I want you to look now at uh, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 27 and 28. Proverbs chapter number 16, verse 27 and 28. <coughs> An ungodly man diggeth up evil, and in his lips, look at this, there is as a burning fire. What does it mean he digs up evil? It's something that's been buried. What is it referring to? Something of someone's past. And they're digging it up. You ever heard people say that before? Why are you digging up my past? Look at the next verse. A froward man so is strife. Now watch this. And a whisperer separated chief friends. What's it talking about? It's talking about a person that's being a talebearer, isn't it? It's talking about a person that's being a gospel. And what are they doing? You see how Tadler is talking about someone's bad things that they have done? You see how the Tadler specifically is referring about maybe sins that they've committed? What's this evil man going and doing? That makes you an evil person, by the way. If someone has a sin in the past that they've moved on from, you need not to bring that up. That's wicked. That is evil, to be bringing up people's sins from their past. It says that an evil man digs up things from the past. That's what this is saying. And what does it do also? Look at what it does. A whisperer, that's a talebearer, that's a person whispering, not telling you this. They're talking about it quietly behind your back. A whisperer separated chief friends. These are like best friends. If you are a talebearer, you will not have good friends, close friends, long. You know why? Because you're gonna, they're going to eventually find out you're talking about them behind the back. If you are a gossiper, you will not have good friends. You will not have cheap friends like the Bible teaches here. Go to uh, Proverbs chapter number 11. <laughs> now we're going to get more into the specific examples here in the book of Proverbs. Four verses we're going to look at quickly, one right after the other, just as we did with those of being a talebearer. Notice again, like I said, that this person kindling, kindling a fire, kindling strife, was likened unto being a talebearer. Look at Proverbs chapter number 11, verse number 12. Hatred stirreth up strife, but love covereth all sin. So, hatred stirs up strifes, but love covers all sins. It's all about being for, you know, forgiving to someone and not bringing things up. Verse 13. In the lips of him that hath understanding, wisdom is found, but a rod is for the back of him that is void of understanding. Look at uh, <coughs> Proverbs. Oh, I'm sorry, I read chapter number 10. Chapter number 10. Now we'll look at uh, chapter number 11, verse 12. We'll look at that as well. Uh, chapter number 11, verse 12. He that is void of wisdom despiseth his neighbor, but a man of understanding holdeth his peace. Notice the foolish man is talking about his neighbor, isn't he? But the man that loves his neighbor, he keeps his mouth shut. That's the, that's the wise man. Look at verse 13. A talebearer revealeth secrets. What are they going about and talking about? Secret things, aren't they? Other men's matters. Things that they have no business talking about. Saying things that do not involve them. It says a talebearer revealeth secrets, but he that is of a faithful spirit conceal it the matter. A faithful person is one that you can tell things to. That's a real good friend. That you can tell things to and they're not going to go talk to other people about it. You can talk about to this person problems that you have, issues that you have in your life, in your family, whatever it may be at work, and you know that I can confide in you. I can confide in you these things and you're not going to tell anyone. You're a faithful person. What's the opposite of a faithful person? A talebearer. Someone that goes about and tells all of your personal information, all of men's matters, things that don't have to do with you. Look at Proverbs 18.8. Proverbs chapter number 18, verse number 8. Notice also that each time gossip is brought up, every time you're a talebearer, what's it talk about? Strife. What's it talk about? People fighting, people separating chief friends. What's that sound like? Sounds like a church split to me. Do you understand what I'm saying? What did we see also in 2 Corinthians 12? Debatings. What else do we see? Strife. What else do we see? Wrath. What's going on? The quickest way to separate your friends from you, whether they be any sort of friends, this, the, all this wisdom is good for the world too. They need to get saved and become a Christian, but even as far as practicality and living their lives, the people out in the world, the ones that have friends and they have good friends and they themselves are a good friend, are the people that are not telling their friends business to everyone. But do you know the quickest way to have their friends not want to be around them? Start telling their personal business that they don't want anybody to know to other people. You know what they'll do quickly? 
they'll separate from you. It'll bring strife first, and you know what you'll do? You'll separate chief friends. You know the, the, the quickest way to split a church and to hurt people and to cause problems and you know for a church to separate from one another? Isn't the church your chief friends? You know the quickest way to separate the people here? Telling other people in here your other friends matters to other friends even. They would care more if you told another friend than they would a stranger. The last person they want you to tell is another person that's close to them. And if they confided in you some personal information that maybe you are the only person that knows, or maybe you didn't even know, or maybe she doesn't even know that you found out and you accidentally found out, I'm sure the last thing that they want you to do is talk about it. That's the last thing that you should do. If you know personal information about another person, you know what you should do? Hide in your heart. Have a faithful spirit. Don't reveal a matter, right? Other men's matters. Look at Proverbs chapter number 20, verse number 19. Proverbs chapter number 20, verse number 19. He that goeth about as a talebearer, look at it again, over and over again, revealeth secrets. It is to talk about things that are private information. I want to hammer in your head what this definition is and what this person is doing. Revealeth secrets, and then look what happens afterward. Therefore, meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. So oftentimes, a gossiper can do what, too? They can be someone that's flattered. They can be someone that's flattering you with their lips. Go to Proverbs chapter number 26 now, verse number 20. Proverbs chapter number 26, verse number 20. Almost every single time you have people splitting from one another when you see this. When you see the tongue being spoken of, it, it casts a fire. It starts a fire. What is that fire referring to in the book of Proverbs? From the tongue. Gossiping. So when the Bible talks about the most dangerous member on your body being the tongue, and that it can cause more damage to anyone... We cross-reference that in the Bible, and what specific act is it that's the most dangerous act? Repeatedly. Gossiping. Tailbearing. Let that sink into your mind. I keep saying this over and over again because this is something that is socially accepted, and people gossip all the time, and they don't have a clue that they're gossiping. They have no idea that they're gossiping. Look at Proverbs chapter 26, verse 20, as I said. <coughs> Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. Does this sound familiar? So where there is no talebearer, the strife ceases. What is, what's going on here? Fightings, strife, people separating from one another. It says this, verse 21, As coals are to burning coals and wood to fire, so is a contentious man. So the talebearer is also what? He's a contentious person, isn't he? So is a contentious man to kindle strife. I hope everyone understands looking at these. We have one more verse we're going to go to. I hope everyone understands how serious this is. How serious gossiping and talking about other people behind their back, talking about private matters behind someone's back. And here's the thing. If it ended up being you that was being talked about, I'm sure you'd understand at that point of how serious it is. Normally the person that doesn't get how serious of a transgression this is is the person that's doing it. That's normally who it is. It's the person that doesn't understand that it's that big of a deal. So what do we have? We have a whisper. If you are talking about someone behind their back and you're not willing to say that to that person, to their face, there's a big chance that you shouldn't be saying those words anyways. You shouldn't be talking about what you're talking about in the first place. What else do we see? We saw a backbiter. If what you are saying is hurtful to the person that's being spoken about, there's a good chance you shouldn't be talking about it. Almost all of these things are always involved in gossip in the first place. It's, it's almost cookie cutter every single time. They don't want to say it in front of you. That's what it is. You're tailbearing. They're going from house to house. It's hurtful information. That's what people love to gossip about the most. You know, we saw a busybody. What does that mean? That they're in other men's matters. They're getting in this person's matter. They're getting in this person's matter. Matter just means topic subjects in their life, right? Other men's dealings, right? They're getting in other men's matters. Stay out of other people's business. Don't try. If there's a problem going on at this church, don't try to get into it. Don't try to find out what's going on. And I'm going to let everybody know that I'm going to take gossiping extremely serious at this church. I mean extremely serious. Here's the thing. If, if you hear, a per, if, let, me, let me explain it in two different ways. If, if you are God or if a person comes to you, I'm going to let you be the person that is innocent. If a person comes to you and they gossip about another person, you should tell them immediately, I don't want to talk about that. Immediately. If that happens again, 
Re let's say a couple of times. Give them two to three chances. These are the, I'm saying, I'm the ruler of this church. I, I, I'm sure everybody understands that. And these are the rules in the church. If someone comes to you and they start to talk about private information of another person and you know that this is gossip, tell them you don't want to talk about it. If they come to you two or three times, because this can be a bad habit that you may have to get rid of. So I'm giving you opportunities to get rid of this habit. Okay? If they come to you two or three times talking about hurtful information behind someone's back, you come. You tell, if you're a woman, you tell your husband and tell him to come tell me about it. I'm not going to put up with that. I'm dead serious. I'm not kidding at all. I will not put up with gossip. And I'm not going to be a respecter person. If my wife comes to you, you tell, and this happens with my wife, you tell your husband and he comes and tells me about it. It doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter who you're talking to. We have families in here. If a family member comes to you and wants to gossip, it doesn't matter. You treat that the same way. And let me say this too, because it can be bad amongst husband and wife. That's not okay either. What makes it different for you and your husband, you and your wife, to talk about somebody else's sins? If you had a personal sin in your life, do you think that you would like it if my wife and me, my wife and me, me and my wife... Me and my wife spoke about that behind your back. I'm sure it would be just as hurtful, wouldn't it? What, what makes a difference? Nothing. It's just as wrong. You, even in your house, should not be tattling, should not be gossiping, should not be talking about other men's matters. It's not only spreading it from house to house. You can do that same thing in your house. There's multiple definition of, definitions of it. If it's other men's matters, if it's hurtful, don't be talking about it to anyone. No one. Period. Let's take a strong stand on gossiping. Amen. It's something that is, that is fine, accepted. That's why these churches are a mess today. Because they let everything just be pushed under the rug. They don't take the Bible serious. They don't have a ruler that's setting rules. And then they just, everything's a game to them. It's not going to be a game here. Because this church means a lot to me and this church is not going to split over stupid, you know, women walking around talking to each other, men walking around talking to each other. And you know why it'd be another reason? This just popped in my mind. You know another reason why you shouldn't be telling your husband? Because, yeah, maybe the women gossip and maybe they can't tame their tongue. But, you know, when you tell your husband, if the other men don't know about it and he goes and gossips, guess what? That fire just spread to another group of people. Because the women and the men are, we don't talk to you. I don't talk to your, go around talking to your wife. You know, we don't speak about things, right? You don't talk to my wife. We're, we're, you know, we're acquaintances and friends, but we don't just, you know, sit down and talk about things. The women do. The men do. So when one woman tells her husband, or a husband even tells her, you know, his wife, you know what happens? You just opened up a new gate for that gossip just to spread further. It's just a new people, a whole new gate. Now if that guy's a tattler, all... Five, six, seven, eight guys, how many? Sit down. Now you have a whole new group of people this fire just spread to. You just threw all more, you know, that much more wood on the fire to just let it spread even further. Don't even be gossiping in your bedroom. Don't be talking about other people's matters Amen. to anyone. I don't care if it's your best friend. I don't care if it's your mother, father, brother, sister, anyone. Anyone. And if it happens, come to me. Tell me about it. Tell me about it and we'll talk about it and hopefully we can fix it. Right? The only time that you should be involved in someone else's affairs, if it's private information, is this. <coughs> this is when. It's if you are a, you have a testimony. And you know what? If maybe there's something that went wrong, because like I said, it's always something going wrong. Something goes wrong and then you need to be a witness. But you know what? You're only going to be given the information that you need. You still don't need to know every detail, every jot, every tittle about what's going on. That can even be, you know, if you, if you look in, like, why people will lie about things. If you ever look into, like, you know, uh, you know, Shoshana Anderson writing analytics and how you bust people. I'm serious about this, though. They don't like the, the person that comes in as a testimony to know all the details. Because if they get more details, they might find out a person's involved that they want to uh, help. Yeah, they would lie for that person. You understand what I'm saying? So you don't want them to know everything. You just want them, just come in. Don't, you only tell them what information is needed. They sit down. Now give me your testimony. Get out. That's all you need to know. That's it. So that's the only time you should ever be involved in someone else's matters. Unless they come to you. Maybe they want to confide information in you. And you know what you need to be? You need to have a faithful spirit. You need to tame your tongue. You need to not take that information 
What, you know, how much worse can it get when a friend comes to you and they have something that's hurtful in the first place? And then what do you do? You go tell it to other people. I mean, it can't get much worse than that. When a, a person that you trust, maybe a chief friend, a best friend that is, they think this person is a person I can really trust. This person is a person I, can, I won't tell. You know, I'll only tell this person. I won't tell this to anybody else. You confide in them that information, and then they leave, and they go and tell all of this hurtful information to scores of their other friends. Can you think of anything that's more hurtful than that? That's a, that really is about the worst thing that can happen, isn't it? That's one of the worst things that can happen. That's, that, that's why over and over again you see strife brought up in the book of Proverbs. You see strife <coughs> brought up amongst churches. What's always present? Whisperers, backbiters, busybodies, tattlers, talebearers. Gossiping is not something small. I don't care what this world accepts, and I don't care what this culture thinks is not a big deal. I care what the Bible says is a big deal. You know how you find out? Let's look at how God describes gossip. Let's look at how serious God explains gossip to be. What's the result of gossip according to the Bible? It's people splitting. It's people not being friends anymore. That's the quickest way according to the Bible. That's, that's the primary way. Let me say that. That's the primary way <laughs> to separate your best friends. If you wanted your best friend to stop being your best friend, you know the number one thing you can do according to the Bible? Gossip about it. Just go tell all their information to somebody. That shows you how dangerous it is. I want you to go to Ephesians chapter number 4, verse number 29. Ephesians chapter number 4, verse number 29. <coughs> so again, lastly, how to know if you are gossiping going forward. How to know you are gossiping. If you have to whisper, you're gossiping. If it's something you won't talk about in front of that person, you are gossiping. I don't mean literally I mean, if you won't say it to their face. That's what it means to be a whisperer. It's not somebody who's just literally. It's someone who won't say it around you. If it's, you're talking about something that you wouldn't say around that person, then you shouldn't be talking about it, most likely. If it's hurtful to others, it's probably gossip. If you're hurting someone, if this is something that's hurtful to them in general, if this is something that has hurt them in the past, it's probably gossip. If it's a sin that they've committed, a wrongdoing, that's tattling, isn't it? So first we had whispering. The hurtful to others is what? Backbiting. Then what did we see? Tattling. That's if you are discussing a wrongdoing. That's what it means to tattle. Discuss someone's wrongdoing. And the major telltale sign was what? A busybody. If it's other men's matters. That's something that you should not be involved in. If you know this is something that they would not want me talking about to other people, just use your own common sense. Nine out of ten times you can probably figure it out. If, think about it from this situation. Use all of these, and if you're still having trouble, think about this. Is this something that I would be comfortable with them telling another person? Use that also as a key to figure that out. So you turn to Ephesians 4, correct? So we see here what not to do in Ephesians 4 and what to do. Ephesians chapter number 4, look at verse number 29. The Bible says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Sadly, every time I've ever heard this verse preached, every time, I have, uh, I, I can't think of even an exception, even while I was in Arizona. I've never heard someone preach this verse, and maybe people have, but I've scores of times heard this verse preached as in saying, don't cuss. The Bible does not have like a list of words you shouldn't say. Let me say that. There's not this list of like words that are just off limits. You're just, you know, you're, that's cuss words. That's not even in the Bible. The Bible defines for you what corrupt communication is in this passage. So he says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. And then he says this, but that which is the, to the use of edifying. What does it mean to edify? To build up. It means something that's hurting or corrupting another person. But we should be saying things that edify or build people up, that help them, not hurtful things. Further proof of that is keep reading that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed into the day of redemption. Now look at verse 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor, notice all these things, and evil speaking be put away from among you. What's it talking about? Things that are hurtful to other people. That's corrupt communication. Anything that's not building another person up. Anything that's not <clears throat> helping them and furthering them 
in their Christian lives. This is the last verse I'm going to read you right here. It says this in Proverbs chapter 17, verse number 9. Listen to this. It's very similar to another verse that we read, but it has something uh, uh, addition, in addition to it. Listen to what it says. Proverbs 17, 9. He that covereth a transgression seeketh love. It's talking about a friend that loves another friend. And what are they doing? Because they love them. They're, they're doing the exact opposite. They're covered. They themselves are, are trying to stop people from finding out about it. It says they're covering the transgression. It says that person seeks love. Listen to what it says next. But he that repeateth a matter, but he that repeateth a matter, <coughs> separateth very friends. Talking about true friends. That's what very means in the Bible. True friends. Like I said before, chief friends. Do you know what you're doing when you're going around and you're talking about other people's business, you're hurting them. You're doing the most hurtful thing. You're doing the exact opposite of loving that person. You're not helping them. You're not building them up. You know what we need to do as a church is we need to be focused on we need to be focused on all the time on trying to help one another. Trying to build one another up. The exact opposite of a gossiper. A gossiper is someone that's hurting another person. That's why gossiping is so dangerous. That's the reason why. Because it's hurtful to other people. Because gossiping is always someone else's secret secrets. They're revealing you know, secret matters, secret things. It's personal information that they don't want anyone to know. And then you're taking that information as being a good friend of this person, and you're spreading it to other people and telling other people about it. You know what that does? That's hurtful to people. That's corrupt communication. That's hurting your friends. You know what you will ultimately do if you keep that up? You'll separate all your friends from you. You'll end up a person that has no friends. That's what you'll be. If you're a chief gossiper, you'll have no chief friends, right? You won't have any friends. You know what you'll do? You'll cause problems at the church. Everyone at this church should, going forward, should do what? Tame their tongue. You need to bridle your tongue. You need to not be speaking about things that have nothing to do with you. If it does not involve you, don't talk about it. If it doesn't have, if you don't need to be involved in it, and it has to do with someone's, you know, private life, especially a wrongdoing that they have done, don't even talk about it. Don't bring it up. And you know what? Try to cover it. Let's not just keep, you know, let's not just do the things that God says not to do. Just follow that. How about we try to be the good example too? To not only not do the things we shouldn't do, right? But also. To not do the things we shouldn't do, yes. And, but also to do the things that God says, this is the good example. Why not try to cover your friend's transgressions? Why not try to even you know, make sure that other people don't find out about it? And if you hear someone else gossiping, tell them, don't talk about that. Tell them, how do you think you'd feel if you were gossiping and telling someone, you know, personal business that would hurt them, and then, let's say, someone walked up to them in church and said, hey, I'm sure that they would not want you talking about that. That would be hurtful to them. How would you feel if that was you and you were the one spilling all that? You'd feel like an idiot, wouldn't you? You'd feel like a bad person, wouldn't you? If you're like, hey, that would be hurtful. How would you feel if they went and got that person and brought them there? It's not whispering anymore. It's not as enjoyable, is it? Right? They brought that person there and they're standing there and they said, hey, she was just telling her about this. So-and-so did this and that. Then you wouldn't like that, would you? That sounds terrible, doesn't it? That's why you don't gossip. That just shows that you know that that's something you shouldn't be talking about. That's what it shows. We need, to, we need to be a church that tries to cover each other's transgressions. We need to be a church that loves one another. You know a quick way to have a lot of problems in our church going forward? Talk about everybody. We could spend eternity talking about each other's problems. Really? You know, I got plenty of them myself. You got plenty of them. Brother Rick definitely has plenty of them. No, I'm just kidding. Everybody in here has a ton of problems, right? We could spend forever just talking about all the issues that we have. You know what we should spend our lives doing? Trying to cover each other's transgressions, not let other people find out about it, and then help them so that they don't continue to, you know, commit those same transgressions. Try to make your neighbor, your brother, your sister in Christ a better person. Instead of spreading all their bad news. Love them. Don't talk about them behind their back. Love them. Let's bow our eyes and have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father God, we thank you, dear Lord, for giving us <coughs> all the information that we need to identify when we're gossiping, Lord. We thank you for just 
showing us how wicked and how evil and just you know, what the result of a gossiping tongue will do. And we thank you, dear Lord, that, we, that you explain to us that it's, it's hard to tame, so we know that it's something that's going to be very hard to work on. We also thank, thank you that you tell us what the result of it will be, that it will, it will split up friends, it will split up churches, it, will, it can be very bad. Dear God, we ask you that you would be with us, that you would bless us, help us to love one another, spread abroad, abroad in our hearts the, the love from the Holy Spirit. And just lead, guide, and direct us in our lives. Help us to make the right decisions. Help us to understand your word and to learn and grow more in you. We love you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen.